And just like that, it's all over. South Africa with the 107-run victory here at Supersport Park in Centurion to take a 1-0 lead in the four-match test series against England. I'm here with Independence main man on the tour, Vitushan Hantharaja. Vish, pretty comprehensive from South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. There was a point maybe about lunch today when it looked like England with Joe Root and Ben Stokes, obviously because of what Ben Stokes did at Headingley, that you thought maybe they might be able to pull it out of the bag. But yeah. I think the right, it was the right result, wasn't it? South Africa bossed the game from start to finish. Joe Root deciding to win the toss and bowl first. He said it was statistics-based and they certainly did let South Africa get away from them. But yeah, full credit to the Proteas. They absolutely deserve this win. And you know when you consider... Um, the troubles that they faced not just in the last month but with uh, English cricket thieving thieving is probably the right word thieving some South African talent um, right. I think it was a good result and perhaps a result that was um, enjoyed by many more beyond South African fans yeah, yeah. you spoke of the toss and Joe Root said that he he was 50-50 Faf Duplessis and Mark Boucher both saying that they would have won the toss and, and batted first so they were happy with the decision look hindsight's wonderful but at the time did you think it was a strange call yeah, it was a strange call, not least because um, England were suffering with illness and, you know, generally, you know, a test match cricket has changed quite a lot, but the fundamentals remain that you win the toss, you bat first, especially yeah. on a, a ground like this, uh, a Centurion, where it's renowned for falling apart, as it didn't really do yesterday. It, it got up and down, though, didn't it? Yeah, well, exactly, yeah, and it, and it did do today, and to, when you're chasing on a pitch that you can't trust the bounce and you're always going to struggle regardless of how well England coped with it yesterday. So, yeah, I think Joe Root mentioned in his press conference that the decision to to bowl first was built into ultimately the, the statistics that they saw of how this pitch was playing recently and ultimately what they had in their attack and how they do enjoy chasing. You know, this is, I've written in my piece today, they are, they are an ODI side in the way they play test cricket mm. in that they're not too good at setting the pace but when you give them a parameter, when you tell them that you need to score this many runs, you need to bat for these many overs and we'll take this much time out of the game, they can put their mind to it and do it, as we saw over the last you know, three sessions. Ultimately, they just gave themselves a bit too much to do. Um, and I think, you know, as you said, hindsight's a wonderful thing. It was the wrong decision. But I think a lot of people thought at the time that it was pretty peculiar indeed as well. Yeah, tough, tough call to make though. Look, these two sides don't need any, any more motivation. They play against each other. They really seem to bring out the best in each other. And, and seem to win overseas. Uh, but the Jofra Archer story has kind of added a bit of needle to it. As, just come stand a little closer to me. Has added a bit of needle to it as well. We, we asked Joe Root if it had, and he said not. Obviously, he's going to say that. But when he walked out to bat, you kind of sensed a, a real increase in the tension in the ground. Anrik Nokia had a bit of words, eventually got him out. One vicious bouncer. What's your take on it? Has it added a bit of spice for you? Um, I think it has, but you know, ultimately it's too you know, two proud Test Nations playing a four-test series. I would agree that it did add a bit of niggle because beamers tend to do that anyway when yeah. you're playing in the park with your mates yeah, or yeah. playing on the international stage. Um, I think it'll be something to keep an eye on, certainly. Mm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if Joffrey Archer's certain to play the next Test, but no doubt if he does, you know, New Year at Cape Town, that's going to be a huge atmosphere. He'll certainly be someone they're gunning for. As in you know, as if this was flipped around, if we were in the UK, people would be gunning for Robada similarly. Right. Is that right. fiery, fast, quick? So, yeah, I mean, a bit of niggle, but I mean, in our jobs, we love that kind of stuff, don't we? Yeah, absolutely, and, and it, it uh, definitely fills some uh, column inches for us. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, Ben Stokes, his wicket really seems to tear the game open. While he was there, you know, rumours of Headingley and you know, talk of of the miracle circulated, and, and after he he. Biffed Keshav Maharaj for back-to-back -back fours, you know, that increased. But Keshav got him out. Not only does he add that spin option, but he hastened the arrival of the new ball, which proved decisive, without compromising an attacking threat. One of the main differences between the sides as a specialist spinner. Do you think that England will, will revo re resort back to that uh, heading into new, uh, Newlands? Yeah, I, I think so. The, the fit spinner at the moment um, is Dom Best. He plays for Somerset. He's an off-spinner kind of a more of a, a bowling all rounder as it were you know his, his batting is pretty good he's got a test half century and doesn't really turn the ball too much so I think they will do that for the simple factors that when the game gets away for you, you do need a spinner to come on and at least even just by bowling a bit slower it does kind of bring the pace of the game down yes. and it allows you to wrestle back control and that's what Maharaj did brilliantly today yeah. you touched on it there about being able to fill time between the new ball that 10 overs when Pretorius and Maharaj were, in the, were bowling to get to the new ball that's the time when England actually could have taken the game away from him. Yes. And that was when Maharaj took Stokes' wicket 
as you say, having been hit for two fours. And that was vital. And, and that was a game right there. But it was just, it was exactly the kind of moment that England would have been able to pinpoint. And credit to Pretorius as well. I yes. mean, he was probably the weaker of the the weakest of the seamers on show, but that kind of more because of how well Norkia did. You know, yes. he was outstanding. But Pretorius dug in there, took the wicket of Denley twice. Um, in the first innings when Denley was the leading scorer and in the second when he was on 31, I think, and mm-hmm. threatening to go on again. So it really just, you know, kind of came into the game and wondered if South Africa were weaker beyond their front two of Philander and Rabada. And you leave this game thinking, well, it's a pretty it's a handy attack. attack. And yeah. it's, a, you know, it's a pretty useful and a pretty well-balanced attack as well, especially by the fact that, you know, Maharaj is no mug with a bat and obviously, you know, Pretorius can bat as well. Mm. And then Nokia comes out of nowhere and hits 40 as night yeah. watchman. So yeah. suddenly everything's looking a lot rosier for the Proteas mm. in England. They've already been sick with, with illness. I'm now sick with worry that this series is going to get away from them pretty quickly. Yeah, well, it's going to be a fascinating contest in Newlands. The last time England were in town, Ben Stokes hit, what, the fastest 250 in Test cricket. Johnny Bairstow asked to hit it to All Park. So they'll have good memories there, but they won't be feeling so fresh after this.